Hi everyone, it's Ms. Miller and welcome to our classroom channel. Today we're going to talk to you about symbols in literature. Now before I do that, I want to share a brief story with you. Um, if you look above, you'll see an image of a dollar bill and it's framed. And the reason I'm sharing it with you is because my cousin, he purchased this new home and he had all these beautiful decoratives in it. And in the office, there is a frame on the wall and it has his dollar bill on it. Now to everyone else looking from the outside, this dollar is just, you know, a uh, hundred pennies and so it's really insignificant to most people but to him it symbolized or represented something even more important it was his first dollar that he ever earned so he put that in a frame and to him it sort of symbolized like how he got to where he was that day and his struggle so it meant more to him than others and so this is going to show us that not only do symbols exist in life but they also exist in literature now, let's take a look at what symbols are defined. It really is a person. When we say person, it could be characters in a story, it could be people, objects. You think of objects, you think of a bicycle, it could be a mirror, it could be um, a book. Anything could be a symbol in a text, um, an image. Words can also be symbols, colors, which we'll talk about later. Anything or an, even an event, an action. Something is happening in a story and, and, and it's an action because most, most most um, events are not gratuitous, right? They, um, they're deliberate. Sometimes an author will put something in there on purpose. And if it seems like um, it's, it represents something, chances are that even that event is symbolic. And it basically a symbol is anything that elicits a range of meaning beyond its literal, literal meaning. So a bicycle in of itself is just a, a something that uh, someone would ride it has two wheels right and handlebars but maybe if your dad bought you this bicycle and you know you, you lost it it was stolen and then you found it at a garage sale and now you keep this bicycle forever somehow it's symbolic to you for for whatever reason or even in a story right so symbol is a figurative language or a literary device used to express complex ideas. So it, it's basically the original or literal meaning of a text plus additional meanings within the context of a reading. Now, symbol is an allegory uh, a symbol and allegories are connected. In fact, I like to say that symbols are the cousin to the allegory. An allegory, though, is an object that has a single meaning, and the symbol has multiple meanings. Basically, an allegory is a complex form of a symbol, but you should know that typically an entire work is considered an allegory. For example, if you think of a book, Lord of the Flies, not all books have this, um, you know, or Animal Farm. Uh, that text in particular is considered an allegory, which happens to be, it's a symbol in and of itself. And then obviously it has multiple symbols within the reading itself. There's two types of symbols in a text. One is a conventional uh, symbol. It's public, which means we mo most of us agree on the symbol and its meaning. We all agree it's a shared agreement um, within the society or culture. Um, examples of that include like the Christian cross or the Star of David, a nation's flag. Uh, we all agree that the red, white, and blue stands for perhaps freedom, the good shepherd. So these are all conventional symbols, right? We all agree on it. If you ask, um, if you pick up the phone and ask a friend, hey, what is, what is the, the eagle symbolized? They would agree with you on that. So the purpose of symbolism is to reinforce really the meaning of the text. Now, not only are there conventional symbols or public symbols, but there are literary symbols or personal or private, which means that, um, you know, you will take something within a text and it's not necessarily shared. It's sort of confined to that particular text. So what, even though it might symbol, symbolize uh, something in the book, it's going to be different from book to book. Um, the setting can be a symbol in a text. Characters, different characters can be symbols if they, rep if they seem to be really significant. Um, an action, which we discussed before in a text, maybe an action typically like violence in, an, in, in a text is, is definitely symbolic of something. It's trying to communicate some sort of meaning or reinforce a theme. And so violence in one text 
text might have one meaning and then violence in a different text might have completely different meaning. So it's personal, it's not a shared one, it's not no longer conventional. Um, names can also be literary symbols. Basically, personal or private uh, symbols are ones that authors choose, they decide. So you, they might exploit what they sh shared associations, for example, the peacock, peacock with pride or an eagle with heroism. Um, the rising sun might be symbolic of birth. Uh, the setting of the sun with death. Climbing might represent progress or descent. Climb going down might represent failure. So literary symbols and conventional symbols are different. The literary ones are really assigned to that text. That author selected that piece um, to symbolize it, and it will be different from text to text if it does exist, OK? The challenge with personal symbols is that you, you won't know what it means. You have to figure it out. You have to do really close reading. Criti it requires critical thinking. Um, the one symbol that I notice uh, that exists in everything that I've read per perhaps is the rose. When a rose isn't just a rose, the rose comes up in poetry, short stories, novels, and in many cases it is symbolic. Um, it represents something. And, and oftentimes, even though we think of rose in a certain way, it may have, you know, a personal, um, even though it has like a, a connotation, it has personal, it's a personal symbol. So it's kind of difficult if you read a story written by one uh, person and the rose is symbolic in one way, and then you read something else, the rose means something completely different. It's still a symbol, but it's, um, it's a personal one or a private one or a literary symbol. Now, the qualities of symbols, there are several, and we have one is if, if it's a symbol, it's typically mentioned multiple times throughout a literary work. So if you say that, um, let's say the conch in Lord of the Flies is a symbol, then it needs to be mentioned throughout the text, not just in one section of the text. Second is the meaning may evolve as the reading progresses. So you may um, feel like, okay, the conch reflects one meaning, but then you continue reading and you realize or recognize that it takes on a whole different um, meaning, and that can happen. When you read a text and there are symbols in it, it really heightens the meaning of the text. It really heightens or increases is the value of the text. Oftentimes, I like to say that uh, symbols travel in packs. Often, multiple symbols exist in one literary work, especially if it's a long piece. You're not just going to have one symbol throughout an entire text. It's going to have many layers and several symbols. Um, however, if you have shorter works, such as like poems, and they're really short in length, because every word counts in a poem, you may see fewer symbols. It might even be a single symbol, but not as near as, as you would find in like a, a novel. Most all fictional work possess, um, works possess symbols in some form. So I haven't read a text that does not have a symbol. So you can always count on there being some sort of symbol in anything you read, especially if it's fictional text. Um, symbols really add layers and depth to a work. You can really have like a quality discussion on um, a text when there are symbols in it. And then also it communicates complex ideas, which we discussed earlier, allows for a quality reading and can initially show up as a metaphor. So you might see it as a metaphor um, and we'll discuss that in class. And then you and if it shows up again in, in, a, in a similar fashion, then chances are that is a symbol. Now, the other thing you should recognize is that colors can also function as symbols. So if you see a color um, in a text, um, chances are, and here's just a color chart, red, orange, yellow, um, green, blue. And for example, if you think about The Great Gatsby and they talk about the eggs, and I know there's color in there and, and it may signify affluent. So different colors do signify, and if you look on there, even at red um, means power or violence, passion, aggression. So those are two ideas um, that are almost polar opposites within the context of one color. So it, can, it ranges, there's a range for symbols. Okay, so that's going to start us off for um, what is a symbol, how to recognize a symbol, what the purpose is. I hope that you found that helpful.